Good day, my friends, and welcome to a brand new episode of Everyday Truth. In fact, a brand new year of Everyday Truth and a brand new book in Everyday Truth. We're starting the book of Romans today in our Bible. Uh, A helpful thing to do if you're just joining us for this podcast is to follow along in your own Bible. Of course, if you're driving or exercising or doing something else and just listening on your earbuds, then don't follow along. Just listen carefully. But what, what we try to do every day is just get in the Bible, verse by verse, chapter by chapter, book by book. We believe here at Everyday Truth that the Bible changes lives. We believe in the sufficiency of the Word of God and the power of the Word of God. And specifically, as we look at the book of Romans and consider its grand theme, which is the power of the gospel, we can see that the the life-changing gospel power of Jesus Christ can transform your life and the lives of those with whom it comes in contact. So we're looking forward to our study of the book of Romans. And I want to give you just a little bit of background information just so that we have a 50,000-foot view, a 30,000-foot view of the book before we dive in. Of course, Romans is a letter. It's an epistle written by the Apostle Paul. And Paul is the, the Gentile name of the apostle. His name, given name, was Saul, which is the Hebrew name. But because he is an apostle to the Gentiles, uh, he goes by the name of Paul. And Paul just has a burden. And his burden is to reach the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. If anybody knows how powerful the gospel is, Paul does. Uh, Paul was dedicated as a Pharisee to stamping out Christianity. He saw it as a cult. He saw it as a threat to authentic Judaism. And yet when he met Jesus on the road to Damascus, his life was permanently and radically transformed. And from that day on, uh, Paul, the persecutor, became Paul the apostle. And specifically, the Lord Jesus there on the road to Damascus said, "Uh, Paul, you are going to be my special prophet, my special apostle, I should say, to the Gentile people, which I find is very ironic because the apostle Paul, his burden, his heart's cry was for his own people. Uh, He could wish that he would be accursed from Christ for his brethren, his kinsmen, according to the flesh. We'll read about that in this very letter. And yet uh, Paul was an apostle to the Gentile world. So he, he led Jews and Gentiles both to Christ. He went to the Jew first, also to the Greek, but primarily the apostle, was a, the apostle Paul was a missionary to the Gentiles. A big part of his ministry was church planting. Uh, he went on several missionary journeys. We know the first journey with Barnabas. Uh, the second journey with Silas, and then uh, later on Timothy and uh, also Luke. And they started churches in Asia Minor, but I'm sorry, m- mostly on that second missionary journey in in what we, we would call the European continent, places like Philippi and Thessalonica and Berea, Corinth. Uh, and then on the third missionary journey, the Apostle Paul spent the bulk of his time in Ephesus, but also went and visited some of those churches that he had started on that second missionary journey, collected some money for the poor saints at Jerusalem. And it was on that third missionary journey, somewhere in the mid-50s AD, that the Apostle Paul had a little three-month hiatus in Corinth before he was to go back and deliver the money to the poor saints at Jerusalem, before he was to go back and remember, ultimately get arrested in Jerusalem and spend two years in prison in the coastal city of Caesarea. But before he went back to Jerusalem, uh, on that after that third missionary journey, the Apostle Paul wrote this letter to the church at Rome. Now, where did the church at Rome find its beginning? I mean, if Paul never went there, if we don't read about some other missionary or apostle going there, then how did there just magically appear this church at Rome? Well, we don't really know. We know there was a church there because Paul wrote to them, perhaps uh, people that were saved at the day of Pentecost, because the Bible does say in Acts chapter two, that among those that heard the gospel and were saved at Pentecost were some from Rome. And of course, we know Rome was a very transient place. 
and the people from around the kingdom would go. So through whatever means, uh, a church at Rome had been established. Now, remember, uh, the Caesar in Rome was very, very uh, capricious, and there were times when he expelled all the Jews from Rome. Remember, that was uh, Ananias and Sapphira. Uh, Not Ananias and Sapphira. I'm getting my names mixed up. Aquila and Priscilla. There we go. Uh, Much better couple, by the way. And uh, they were expelled from Rome. And that's where Paul met them in Corinth. Uh, But after five years, we're allowed to go back. So uh, we don't know exactly how the church started. We just know there was a church there and they desperately needed what every church needs. And that is a strong dose of Bible doctrine foundational knowledge about what the gospel is and what the gospel can accomplish in our lives individually and in our church lives corporately. And that really is the book of Rome as the apostle Paul unveils the power of the gospel. Now we'll see it in Romans chapter one and verse 16, which is kind of our key verse for the book. Uh, But wow, we'll see the transforming power of the gospel show up in so many different ways. For instance, the gospel has the power to transform your status. It can justify you. It can give you a right standing with God, not according to your works, but according to the work of of Christ on the cross and the appropriation of that gift righteousness of Jesus Christ to you. If that confuses you, don't worry about it. We're going to talk about all of this. But also, the gospel not only has the power to change our status, to put us in the family of God, to give us a new position in Christ, but the gospel has very practical benefits in our lives. And just as the gospel changes us in justification, so the gospel changes us in sanctification. And day by day, the Holy Spirit of God who lives within us applies that gospel principle to our lives and we become more and more like Jesus every day as we're sanctified, made holy, made more like him. That's God's purpose for your life and for mine. And we'll read all about that in Romans chapters six and seven and eight. We'll learn about the real purpose of the law. The law cannot save you. What We'll find out that God honored his purpose, his promise uh, to Israel. And God has graciously allowed us as Gentile believers to get in on that promise. What a merciful and gracious God we serve. And then by the time we get to Romans chapter 12, we're going to find out that the gospel has really powerful and practical implications in our life that God expects for us to behave like the people that we are, that God expects for us to give ourselves lock, stock, and barrel to God, to use the gifts and the graces that God has poured into our life to serve him, to serve him in the way that he deserves, and that we should serve together in unity and downplay our differences that might be preferential or cultural and upplay the common bond that we have in Jesus Christ so we can be like that mighty band of co-workers in Romans chapter 16, serving God together to make a difference in a world that desperately needs Jesus Christ. Well, that was just some introductory thoughts. We didn't even cover one verse yet, so it's going to be a long study. Uh, it really won't. We'll, we'll, we'll move more quickly as we, as we move along. But I do want you to see Romans chapter 1 and verse number 1. Let's get at least a couple of verses under our belt here in this first uh, episode. So Romans chapter 1, verse number 1, Paul introduces himself. And he says, Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God. So right there in the very first verse, we see that Paul's whole focus is the gospel and the power of the gospel. Look at the parenthetical in verse number two, which he had promised afore by his prophets, the gospel, uh, that he promised this gospel in the person of Jesus Christ. uh, The gospel was promised before, before Paul's day uh, in the prophets. That means the Old Testament Uh, in the Holy Scriptures. So what can we learn right here on day one about the book of Romans, about the ministry of the Apostle Paul, about this letter that we're going to study over the next few weeks? Okay, well, first of all, we see its author. 
So Paul. In Bible days, when letters were written, uh, they began with the author. So Paul, and then to the audience, to those that are at Rome. Uh, you'll see verse number seven, to all that be at Rome. So that's the audience. So author and audience. And it's important when you read the Bible that you kind of have an idea, humanly speaking, who was the original author, the author whom God used. We know that the author of Scripture is the Holy Spirit, but who is the human author that God used? And then who was the, the, the first recipient, the audience? Because in and through that understanding, we're going to understand the letter better. So author and audience. And then uh, we understand a little bit about the author himself. So the Bible says, Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ. Now, Paul could have introduced himself in any number of ways. By this time in his career, Paul could have listed any number of accolades. I mean, he was a church planter extraordinaire. Uh, he was a, a famous apostle. Uh, he had written many letters already. He had mentored many people. Uh, no doubt there were many letters of recommendation he could have supplied. And yet when the apostle Paul introduced himself to a brand new church, people that had never seen him face to face before, he said, I am a slave. That's the word, servant, doulos. I am a servant of Jesus Christ. And understand that the title Jesus Christ, Jesus is a name. Christ is a title. So Christ means Messiah. So I am the servant of Jesus, the Messiah, which is really interesting because Paul's whole ministry before he was saved was to convince people that Jesus was not the Messiah. And now the way he identifies himself is, I am a servant of Jesus, the Messiah. Boy, can God radically change a life? Absolutely. Does the gospel have power? We see it in the very author of the book because Paul's life was radically changed by the power of the gospel. He now considers himself to be a slave to the one whom, whom he was persecuting, Jesus the Messiah. Then the Bible says, a servant of Jesus Christ called to be an apostle. So I know who I am and I know what I'm supposed to do. Uh, I've been commissioned. I've been called to be an apostle, apostolos. That means a sent one, an emissary, one called with a task to take a message. Paul says, I understand what my job is. I'm to take the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ and spread it to places that have never heard that message before. I know my calling. And then the Bible says, I'm separated unto the gospel of God. And I love the terminology there, separated unto. In the Bible, when you read about the term separation, a lot of times in, 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 in modern parlance, we, we look at separation as what we are separated from. Like, I don't do this, and I don't go there, and I don't wear this, and I don't say that. Separation from. But when the Bible talks about separation, it's almost always what we are separated unto. God is far more concerned about what we say yes to than what we say no to. Now, when we say yes to God's call, when we say yes to who we are in Christ, that's going to necessitate a whole bunch of no's. But always make sure that the no's of your life are contextualized within the bigger yeses of your life. Like, yes, Lord, I'm following you. And yes, I know who I am. And yes, God, I know what my job is. And Paul said, I am separated unto the gospel of God. I want my whole life to be about the life-saving message of the gospel. I know what it did for me. And I know what it can do in the lives of others. I'm separated. It's interesting because the Apostle Paul found all of his identity in his former life in being a Pharisee. And you know what the word Pharisee means, don't you? The word Pharisee means a separated one. So Paul is like, I used to be all about separation back then when I was a Pharisee, but now I'm all about separation. Not what I don't do, but who I am and what I get to do, the liberty I now have in Jesus Christ, the gospel. And then finally, verse number two, the Bible says, this gospel was promised afore by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. Matter of fact, I'll tell you what, we're going to come back to that verse because I'm out of time, just glanced at the clock. So welcome to 2024. 
Welcome to our brand new study of the book of Romans. Welcome to the Everyday Truth family. Have a great day in the Lord. We'll see you next time. God bless you, my friends. Thanks for taking time to watch. If you enjoy Everyday Truth, please like, subscribe, or share it with a friend. Until next time, God bless.